Hey guys, good morning, and about to head off to work. It's Saturday. I had the uh, do a little bit of work in the in the morning here, so I didn't really turn the camera on. But anyway, off to work. <laughs> no, I did some work around the the place here, so now I'm off to work. And yeah, so I'm gonna have to uh, at work um, work on uh, possibly loading up some more of the uh, 40 caliber polymer stuff because we may um, we may hit the range a little bit. Um, within the next couple of days I'm not sure so again every time I say that uh, it, it never goes through but we'll see we'll see what happens um, so anyway yeah off to work so I'm gonna have moonshine do something real quick here I want you to smell this this substance here and what do you and tell me what you think of it what it smells like to you go ahead licorice Okay. Oh, yeah. Did, 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 nothing else? Like, not a... No, not really. Okay. I mean, my nose is a little clogged up. Too. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Moonshine just smelled Ballastol. Right. Okay. So, he um, he said licorice. Well, that's what it smells yeah. like to me. That's what it does like to me, too. Yeah, I mean, you know. Okay, so, at work, just kind of finishing up. Short day today. Um, it was a bit slow, so... I set up my press here in the back, or not my, uh, I just got my, um, my Lee hand press. I didn't set up any kind of elaborate press, but uh, just finishing up on the final steps on, on some of this 40, because getting ready, because I might, like I said, I might go and shoot, uh, do some more videos for you guys, so I got some of that 40 loaded up. Um, I did want to bring some of my, uh, my ballastol, and what I did was I just saturated um, I just saturated this paper with it and it's still on there. I, I do like the smell of that. I don't know why. Um, cause it's probably cause I like licorice. Anyway, um, take that with me. Cause actually what I found is, uh, I have been just using a light bit of gun oil or whatever for the case lube. I know some people don't use the case lube. Uh, I do because I just, uh, it's, I just find it easier. It, it, it just and it's not that much work to uh, lube it up for me. Of course, everybody's doing it differently, but I've never had any issues with it. Never had uh, some kind of weird cross contamination, killing primers or killing powder or anything like that. Um, I've been doing it for quite a while. Uh, reason I started doing it was because when I was I used to use the uh, lanolin, uh, lanolin oil and uh, alcohol like a 90, 91% or uh, an ESO heat alcohol or whatever, um, and spray it. And that's actually what Dylan Case Lube is. But the problem with that stuff is it, after a while or after it, you know, it's great at first, but then if you say store the ammo, there's a thick gum that d develops on that and it just ruins it and it ruins your dyes. Uh, eventually it just builds up inside the dyes. So anyway, uh, so I just started finding out that just a little bit of uh, gun oil, just I just put it on a little piece of paper like this and just really just kind of roll, roll a couple of the brass right through it and just it doesn't take long at all. And I've never had any issues with it. Everybody does everything different. So, you know, everybody's going to reload different. Everybody's got a, a different way. That's just the way I do it. Uh, so I got about a... Got about 100 rounds right here loaded up. Just gonna wrap them up here. I'll probably uh, run them through uh, polishing, polishing for the final stage, just to get them looking all purdy <laughs> for the uh, for the next uh, for the video. Now these again here are the polymer coated stuff that I got from uh, Badman Bullets. Really cool stuff. Left the barrel super clean, and I want to do another some more videos with it. I uh, get it out there and do it. Get this wrapped up. Um, for me, it's kind of a pain to bring all this stuff to work sometimes, but uh, that's the beauty of the job. It's it's pretty laid back. Um, it's pretty, and, and of course, uh, come to the afternoon, it's pretty dead on the sales floor, so get to come back here and just hang out. Not much of a sun.
guess what? Yep, it is still grease. <laughs> I don't know. I think we've debunked that. Oops, <laughs> I think we've debunked this whole little turns into tar bit. Because I, I don't remember how long this has been out here. Just a bit. Well, I'm home, and I guess the, it's, it's night time already. We're coming to it. It's uh, getting getting dark. It'll be dark soon. <laughs> Matthias. Is that his name? Matthias. No, it's Matthias. Matthias will be out. <laughs> I think some of you know what that is. Anyway. Yeah. Well. Not much to report on this end. Getting ready to get indoors. Guys, now you know why this vlog is called 629. Because <laughs> we're going to clean the 629. Okay, so I got the brushes. Let's see, I got the brush, um, the jag, and the cleaning rod, some of uh, patches, and ballastol. Hey, hey. Okay, let's get started here. Okay, so one of the things that I do is I actually take the cylinder out. Uh, I went previously. I, it's been about a day. I let it sit for about a day. I soaked it down already. I'm not gonna lie to you. I already pre-soaked this thing with ballastol. So what I do is I take the cylinder out and you can do that on the Smith by removing this screw right here. I always put my thumb there for just uh, to stabilize everything so I don't uh, skip off and possibly scratch the frame. And uh, you should take this thing just take the bit ballastol really has a puts a slick coating on there okay all right so you don't want to lose that so I'll set that aside and I'll go ahead and pull this off and um, a, a part that you want to clean on a revolver is right in here, in the crane. That's where it gets really crudded up. Put a little bit in there. I'll let that sit. And uh, so this has been sitting. Wow, I can tell you, I see, I see a little difference in there already. All right. Gonna go ahead and uh, give it a fresh, a fresh bath in there. I got one of these really stiff brushes. Brushes. Let's see. Well, I know. I know half this. Half this video is a little dark over there. So get the get some light going here for a second. Hopefully the uh, lighting has improved a little bit. Okay. Just go ahead and just. I shoot the 44 special mostly out of this. So it does kind of have that ring of stuff in there that is a little bit set back. That's just uh, one of the things about shooting 44 special. Some people don't do it just because of that. I've never had a problem with it, really, to tell you the truth. So. I don't really actually see anything in there. I think this uh, this product has really done its job. Let's do the barrel while we got it. 
barrel actually looks pretty clean. Oops. Okay. Spray it all over the place. Alright. Go ahead and uh, move this aside. I want to be real careful not to nick the edge of my barrel or anything. Yeah, that ought to do it. Okay. Put this little jag on. Break open these patches. Let's get a couple of them out here. Now, I got some extra ballast all here on the paper, so I'll go ahead and soak the rag in the patch in it. Alright, here we go. Oh wow. That certainly has some stuff in there. Okay. Do it one more time. One more time. Everybody, I notice, uh, cleans their guns differently, and it's uh, it's always interesting. Always somebody trying to outdo somebody, or or go ahead and uh, try to correct somebody. And it's like, you know, I mean, I think, I mean, how many different ways can you possibly clean clean a gun? I mean, it's it's almost pretty self-explanatory. All right. This is one time I like. That's why I like those ramrods, those oversized Q-tips. If you ever seen those. Um, put a little bit more on here uh, it really um, eliminates this running this patch in and jag operation that's pretty clean okay I can take this actually here and clean out all of here and uh, even clean out the face of the, the cylinder in here the the nice thing about this this stainless gun is it pretty much wipes right off. Now there is a little bit of that buildup right there. Let me see if I can't uh, take the edge of the brush and possibly possibly just remove it a little bit. I just took the edge of the cleaning brush to it. All right, that's a little bit better. Now I shoot this gun quite often. I do bring it out a lot and, and shoot it, so it's uh, it's not really one of those that I go over it with a fine white glove job kind of thing. Just use this one and get the initial all that crud out of there. Okay, well. All right, shows you all that stuff coming out of there, and uh, shows me that that the ballast all is really broken it up. Yeah, that's pretty, uh, it's got some, some crud on there for sure. <laughs> Trying to do this and around the tripod. <laughs> Okay. 
let's see that's not too bad you know um i'll run one more just because i'm gonna soak it in some of this ballast all right there all right wow but it looks it, i mean you can see the way it looks and then also around um the ratchet pad here there was it was pretty built up so i, I remember uh, spraying that and it's actually done a real good job of getting rid of a lot of that now the burn rings and all that there's it's really hard to get rid of that um let me take this and just kind of give it a, a real sturdy Now you can get rid of this by, you can use uh, metal polish or whatnot, but I tell you, I, I shoot this gun so much that it's such a waste of energy for me to go through and, and polish those out again, over and over and over again. Uh, and uh, it never seems to get any easier, um, no matter how many times I've polished them out. If I'm just like getting, feeling real picky, some days I'll do it. Why not? And then, okay, so let's uh, see this. You can actually see. That's just, that could be just some burn. Burn right there. Yeah. And I just put a just uh grab some of the ballast off from there and just put a a little light coating on there because then that helps that just spin like a clock right there. Alright. So yeah, let's give it uh quick wipe through now a spot to check on is right between the top of the frame and the forcing cone right in there um, you can get a toothbrush and get in there and, and uh, scrub it I sometimes just uh, grab a rag right here, put a little bit of the ballast all on it, and uh, I'll actually create a wedge that of the the cloth to get in there. And uh, you can see it, there's actually not much. coming out of there so it seems all right and then what I'll do is I'll check the uh, the barrel just put something white in the background there I will say with those polymer bullets, there's not been any leading in there like I usually get. So I'm going to put this thing back together. Now I line up the flutes. What I mean by that is if you look at it from this point on, see the flute there, I line it up with the frame and go straight in that way. Put the um, uh, 
put the screw back in. Now I did notice something actually on the uh, the modern Smith. The the, uh, the screw does have like a little kind of like a a Colt does. So they kind of have that. I've I've not seen that. I've, I've disassembled quite a few vintage Smiths, so I have not seen that. Okay, and this goes back on. I just want to be real careful not to have this thing slip off. All right. Nice. Spins real nice. All right. That's going to be it, you guys. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me on this vlog. So, in a sense, if you saw that, uh, if you're a big fan of the 629 like I am, uh, and, and that's referring to the three inch barrel model. You, you definitely loved every minute of that um, as I did and I the reason I'm doing I did a video like that uh, a little segment like that and uh, if you've been on the around the Batjack JW channel uh, been around that one a lot uh, been doing a lot of videos with it uh, reason for that because I like that gun so much and I was like after it for so much for so long um, <laughs> uh, I really am like kind of obsessed with the gun because you know, there was a time period there where I was just like searching for it for a while and never was able to find one um, so it was like tracking one down and tracking one down for a good price so I kind of got lucky with that one that one's a, a gun broker find and so yeah and I just kind of wanted to do stuff that I was like I wish I could have found while I was searching for videos to drool on when I didn't have one so I could sit there and go Ugh, why, why? <laughs> so anyway that's what it's that was what it's kind of about uh, doing that so anyway I'm gonna get out of here and uh, see you tomorrow thanks for watching uh, like share and subscribe as always and uh, I'll see you Sunday Sunday yeah Sunday oh yeah check it out um, there's there, uh, uploaded the Phoenix Raven 25 auto um, that little pistol that's up on the main channel so check that out anyway thanks for watching hope you found Bruce he's not around here